it's fun to play no limit tournaments but if you're a winning cash game player i always tell those people like going to wsop your hourly is always going to be higher in a cash game i mean it's a little bit like a lottery you can get lucky and get there at the end but i wouldn't be playing a lot of tournaments you know if you want to be sort of a part-time pro in poker or if you're doing it sort of for side income that is a tidbit of advice just don't hear often with regards to making money at poker and i will admit i had not thought of it until i heard it on that podcast years ago that of course is the crush live poker podcast the absolute best place to go in the world of podcasts for poker insight as to how to increase your win rate playing cash games if you want to sign up you can get 25 percent off for life just by using the link in the description below couple of that with weekly videos and you're really in good shape but that is the way that I always view it when talking about why I don't play tournaments I'm not saying I never will but if I ever do I will be entering that tournament because I think it sounds like a fun way to potentially make money not because it is the way to make the most money hourly rates for winning players should be higher playing cash games unless you're some tournament specialist that's usually going to be the case and obviously my hourly rate playing tournaments uh is in the negatives because when it comes to tournaments of any significance thousand dollar buy-ins or more i famously never cashed in one probably somewhere in the vicinity of 0 for 10 lifetime and haven't even tried now in quite a few years we got a game coming together, 0 5 10 at Peppermill. Let's jump in. Blog 279 is coming at you not far from the shores of Lake Tahoe. And by the way, a great time to go to the beaches there apparently is the week after Labor Day, as you'll find 10% of the people there compared to July. Peppermill Reno is a place where I've always basically just shot whatever I wanted on any given day. But on this particular day, they are making a point to allow me to do just that, which I appreciate. Occasionally, I have to mention something strictly for the enjoyment of the Peppermill regulars. And this hand is an example of that, with the legendary Mr. W going all-in preflop with 7-deuce off suit and getting called by a guy named Al T, who I would say is the toughest player to get money out of in the Reno player pool. And because these things are all skill... Mr. W makes a flush with his deuce of spades and wins the pot against what was undoubtedly a premium from Al T. So he'd win that one, and he was back on this day as we'd fire up a game on table five with five players at noon on a Thursday. For the entire first hour of play, I did not have a single playable hand, save the one time I raised eight six of hearts and won five bucks. So when I looked down at Queen Jack... I figured it was worth taking a shot. I make it 35 in this five-handed game from the hijack with Mr. W calling in the cutoff and the under-the-gun player in the rock also seeing the flop. So with 105 in, the flop would come out ace, 10, 8, rainbow, giving me a double gutter. I follow up with a $65 continuation bet, and Mr. W doesn't take too long before making the call with the other guy going out. So with 235 in, the turn is a 6. Now, he has 320 left here. He's going to be calling me on the flop with more hands than any other person in the player pool. But as light as he is capable of calling on the flop, I do think I can get him to lay down hands like a7 here if I put enough pressure on him. And given the fact that he generally plays short stacked, it's going to have to be for the entirety of his stack if I'm going to get that to work. He's got a little more than a pot size bet here. And I decide, right out of the gate here, to go for it with the all-in bluff. Obviously, I'm hoping he at least goes into the tank here. But to my amazement, <laughs> he snap calls his entire stack all-in and shows 9-7 for the straight. He asked me if I want to run it twice. Usually, in what has become a $960 pot, I brick my straight draw on both rivers and he would double up. A couple hands later, Mr. W would be on the rock again, and the cutoff would raise to 30 over it. I have pocket sixes in the big blind and put in the additional green chip. 
And Mr. W then announces that because I have called, he must call as well. So with 90 in, the flop comes out ace, jack five, two diamonds. I would decide to gamble again, because apparently I haven't done enough already. And in this case, I'm basically gambling on the notion that I actually have the best hand here. Spoiler alert, I did. I would donk lead for 60. And Mr. W snap folds. But the gentleman in the cutoff actually says aloud, kind of under his breath, but loud enough where everyone could hear it. Damn it. Damn it. Which is kind of a tribute to Mr. Z, the legend who is currently in Florida. I thought that was going to be followed by a fold. But he then opts to call, which I found astonishing. Turn is a brick. And I felt he was either sandbagging a set or really had a weak hand here. I'm hoping it's the second thing. I fire 100 and he would fold almost instantaneously this time, claiming to have just had a straight draw. I was then in the rock and I know this is going to come as a big surprise, but I'd look down at 8 deuce. I'd win a pair of small pots and then would raise queen jack of hearts and would get 3-bet by John, the Concert Merch King. I'd make the call, which I really need to stop doing, apparently. I'd end up flopping top pair on a queen 8-7 board in this hand, but thankfully, an ace came on the turn, and it made it easier for me to get away, as my opponent would table pocket 8s for a flopped set in a hand that I didn't think he'd 3-bet, but it worked out well when he did. I'd lose a few green chips in a bomb pot, but that's not what I am here to mention. I want to make a public service announcement. If you play in this game, whenever you play a bomb pot, they almost always get chopped, as you know. Some even get three-quartered, which is even worse. And it can take some dealers forever to stack up all the chips in the proper fashion to carve it up. One thing that would really help is don't put red chips into a bomb pot unless you absolutely have to. I'm not saying you can't make $85 bets or whatever, but when you have green chips and you have red chips, put the big chips in the bomb pots. Everyone will be better for it. I would then hero call Mr. W on the river when he took kind of a weird line in the hand that was super polarized, and when he showed a rivered gut shot straight, it all made sense. This is a mid-session update. After the recording of this vlog, I am taking my girlfriend to Anna to a new restaurant up at Lake Tahoe. It's called Wolf by Vanderpump. When she first referenced it, I couldn't resist. I said, what's the name? And she said it again, and I said, Wolf? Shit. That's all you had to say. I don't have a slow walk. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough, I want to hate this. I'll show up. I don't have a slow walk. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough, I want to hate this. I'll show up. I don't have a slow walk. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough, I want to hate this. I'll show up and make a statement. I didn't get it on camera at all, but I raised Jack 10 suited. Mr. W called me with queen four offsuit. I would see bet on a king high board. He found a call with the queen four. No pair, no draw on a king high board. I gave up after he called me on the flop thinking he wasn't folding. Turn and river check down and he wins with queen high. Apparently, he owns me. I think I've said this before, but despite the fact that I'm not rooting for them, I think the Miami Dolphins have some of the best uniforms in the NFL, which they changed to about a decade ago or so. And I just wish they would stop wearing their throwback uniforms on national TV games, which are basically the same uniform, just less cool. Show me those cool new uniforms, damn it. I'd open King 10 of Diamonds in the hijack. Mr. W was racking up his win, but... Would make the call from the cutoff. Button would come in as well. So with 105 in, the flop would come out 10, 5, 8, 2 hearts. Good spot to value bet here. I make it 75. Cutoff calls with the button going out. So with 255 in, 
We are heads up with the player with the widest range in our player pool to an offsuit ace. Now an ace on the turn is never a card you want to see when you have a hand like I do here, but there is no state law requiring him to have an ace here. Not that I've seen in the Nevada Revised Statute. And we know that he's still going to call me with a lot of his weaker hands, including draws and weaker tens, even some other pairs. So it's still, in my opinion, a value betting spot. I make it 150, and he doesn't think too long with it, and calls again. With 555 in, the river is an offsuit four. I check, he checks back, and wins with ace seven of hearts. I think the thing you can take away from this hand is with even regards to the loosest players in your games, if they are racking up while they play a hand, you better believe they got something good. And in this case, he flopped a really good draw, turned a pair to go along with it. I would then play a hand against John the Merch King when I'd call him down with a pair of sixes thinking they were good. And I was right until he drilled a queen on the river and would win that one. So both of those last two opponents that I mentioned were in beast mode on this day. And it left me feeling like the free safety on the other end of a Marshawn Lynch stiff arm as he goes to the end zone. After that, in one of the few hands on the day I'd play against anyone other than those two, I'd raise pocket aces and flop a set. Problem was, a guy called me with nine deuce of clubs. And if you're going to play nine deuce of clubs, you really should turn a flush against a set of aces. And that is precisely what he did. And I would lose yet another one. That was followed up by me getting action on my pocket queens, but after an unknown vlog watcher from out of town drilled two pair on the turn against me, I would lose another 400. And finally, I would get dealt queens yet again a half an hour later, and rather than getting them beat on the turn, this time I would simply get them beat on the flop by ace five, with an ace coming out there. So you know, I would change things up in that regard. So you can already tell that this was a forgettable day. But the good news was, the unforgettable hand, as you're going to see here in a moment, would come the next day. All right, amazingly, there is good news. And that's that on the day after I shot the vlog last week on a Friday, the game ended up being really good. And I ran pretty good as well. Won just under 2,000 in that one. So despite losing 1,800 on the vlog last week and losing just under 1,500 today, it still hasn't been as disastrous of a couple of weeks as it might appear. Still, after running good in July and running good in August, you had to figure that something like this would happen, and I guess you could argue that it's happening as we try to bounce back next time. Let's get to the main event of the evening, if you will, the hand that you're here to hear about. It was in a double board Hold'em bomb pot. So at $25 a pop, but a nine-handed game, we have $225 in. And I would proceed to look down at the worst hand in poker. One flop would come King Deuce Deuce Rainbow. And the other flop would come Queen 6-9 with two hearts. Under the gun bets out for 100 here. Under the gun plus one makes a snap call. And it's on me, middle position one. Going to be tough to fold trips here, but you certainly don't want to get married to trips with a weak kicker and nothing on the other end of one of these hands in a bomb pot. That's for sure. I make the call, and both MP2 and the low jack also call the 100. And I'm going to reiterate, this is very rare in our game. Usually these bomb pots are heads up or at most three ways to the turn. You do not get too many instances where this many guys are still in it. But in this case, we did. With 725 in, I fill up on one board on the turn while picking up a straight draw on the other. Under the gun one, now fires 400. With half the pot pretty much locked up, I would just make the call, hoping to have more money to chop up. And that strategy would work better than I ever imagined it would. Because MP2 calls the 400 behind me. And we're three ways to the river 
with 1925 in. And on one board, I drill the straight to go along with the full house I already have on the other. Under the gun plus one, jams all in for his last 550. Now, MP2 only has 800 or so behind. And my instincts just told me that if I were to raise and try to get all that, that he would fold here, thinking there's no way he could win half of this pot unless he had a bigger full house than me on that one. So I gave it a little bit of thought, and I'm still not sure it's really the right thing to do, but I would just call the 550. He would then think about it and think about it a little more. And finally, put his chips in as well for 550, creating a $3,575 pot. MP2 has eight deuce for trips up top, and under the gun one has 910 for two pair on the bottom. So I win both boards in what is definitely one of the most unbelievable hands of my career to date. Seven deuce off suit. If you're Mr. W, you can beat the tightest player maybe in the history of Reno poker. And if you're me, you can just luck box your way into a crazy, ridiculous bomb pot scenario where you win big pots as well. That'll wrap things up for us on this edition of the vlog. Hit those like and subscribe buttons. If you're new to this channel, it helps things out a lot, and I appreciate it. And if you want to follow along on Instagram, it's at Ben Deesh. We'll see you back here next time. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I'm gonna learn the consequence of being incompetent. Mental health is confidence. Dreams and some honestness. I'm not here to save the day. That's for you to take away. I could play a million mind games, but instead of say something not illogical, something that is topical, rub it on and watch it go. Make yourself unstoppable. Dreams are irresponsible, but they're always possible. If you just believe, you could be so remarkable.